right? All of us want great communication. We want uh, to be able to manage conflict well. In fact, we want a strong, you know, close sexual connection. But really, when I think about it, I, I see these as personal payoffs rather than really what goes into making a strong marriage. In today's episode, Dr. Liz and I kick things off by discussing the differences between roots and fruits in thriving relationships. The truth is, happy, flourishing marriages start with happy, flourishing individuals. I like to say, a happy we starts with a happy me. When our hearts are right and we're in a good place mentally and emotionally, we're much more likely to bring our best selves to the relationship and respond to our partner in helpful ways. So today, we discuss eight words that make both us and our marriages better. The first two words are search inward. The second two words are turn outward. Next comes look upward, and we conclude with press forward. And it all starts with getting our hearts right and staying positive and optimistic. We hope you enjoy the show. Welcome to Stronger Marriage Connection. The doctors are in. I'm your host, Dr. Dave Schramm here at Utah State University, alongside our psychologist, Dr. Liz Hale. She's with us. We are dedicating our lives to bringing you the absolute best marital research, along with some tips and tools to help you have the marriage of your dreams. Now, Liz, today, I, I, I think this is mm-hmm. it's, it's foundational. It's great to be with you. Grateful to have this, this podcast that we're doing together. Today's episode, I'm stinking excited about because the longer I study marriage and happiness and relationship outcomes and newlyweds and divorce, all this stuff, I've really come to understand this singular truth, and that's this, that happy, healthy couple relationships really stem from happy, healthy people, individuals. Have you seen that, Liz? Uh, there's no other way, right? I'm, I'm often saying to my couples, you got to stay on your side of the street and clean up your side of the street. Um, you know, I often say, you know, when we were single, and I have a deep love for singles, right? Because I was one for many decades. Um, but sometimes we think, oh, I just feel like kind of half, you know, if I could just find my other half, then we'd be whole, right? Because one half plus one half is, is whole, but is a one uh, rather. But because we often multiply in our relationships, we multiply our talents, we multiply our family with children. What's one half times one half, Dave? It's a quarter. Actually, it's a fourth. Yeah, yeah, 25%. So we're less as a couple than we ever were as two halves. So the whole goal, just like you're saying, is to be complete wholes, right? One times one, where the one represents that individual. Each individual is 100% accountable for themselves sexually, socially, spiritually, morally, financially, mentally, physically, if I didn't say that. And then one times one, of course, is is still whole. That's that's just the only way to do it. You're right. I love that, actually. I've never thought about that that way, Liz. (laughs) Thank you. Uh, in a in a profound uh, book by Blaine Flowers, one of my favorite books, he says it's called Beyond the Myth of Marital Happiness, and he gives this this quote that I really believe sets up this episode. He says this: "I have become convinced that strong marriages are built on the virtues or character strengths of the spouses. In other words, the best way to have a good marriage is to be a good person. Be a now, healthy part. Does that sound yep. so?" So it sounds so simple, Mm -hmm, right? mm -hmm. You know, just, hey, but that's Mm -hmm. not really what's talked about in marriage books today. What we often hear is, hey, you know, strengthen your communication skills and and managing conflict. And and those are important. Don't get me wrong. Communication and and managing conflict. Those things are important. But I think of relationships as relationship fruits and relationship Mm -hmm. roots, Mm -hmm. right? All of us want great communication. We want uh, to be able to manage conflict well. In fact, we want a strong, you know, close sexual connection. Yeah. But really when I think about it, I, I see these as personal payoffs rather than really what goes into making a strong marriage. These these are wonderful things, but they're really the fruit or the result of a strong foundation. A strong foundation, and that's what we're going to talk about today, is that strong personal foundation, being in a good place personally. I love it. And I'm so glad you reminded me about that book. It's been a long time since I've looked at that. I ordered it again and it came. It's like, I know this book. I know this author. It's, it's really well, it's very well written. Well, you know, it has remind us of the name and the title again, Dave. It's called Be, uh, Beyond the Myth of Marital Happiness. By Dr. 
Yeah, Blaine Flowers. Blaine Flowers. Riga. Yes, I, I have the title memor. I have the book rather, the cover memorized. But thank you for those details. Well, you, as you and I both know, also Dr. John Gottman discovered that mm-hmm. the foundation of the Sound Relationship House is our love maps or friendship. That friendship is really the base. We can't do much of a marriage. Can't have much of a marriage beyond our friendship. When I was growing up, Dave, you know, I had this one poster in my bedroom. It wasn't the movie Grease. It wasn't Led Zeppelin or um, Bread or any of those great groups, even though I love that music. But it was simply a poster that said, the only way to have a friend is to be one. And that really, I think, served me well as a teenager. It serves me well as an old woman today and certainly as a, a married partner is that friendship is foundational. And so what are the roots and fruits? I love how you say that. Have you found in your research, Dr. Dave? Yeah, you know, some colleagues and I, we've done some research over the last several years. We've we've looked at, you know, what are some of these strong predictors? Then we started thinking about the virtues, the values, the character Mm -hmm. strengths. And so we looked at um, how powerful a predictor are some virtues such as compassion, we looked at humility and we looked at positivity. Liz, right. it's it's amazing when we actually looked at this that these these three virtues of humility, compassion, and positivity were really strong predictors of marital quality and of this this happiness, this friendship. Mm. Even so, it was foundational. It really comes before all of the the fruits. These we found were some of the roots. That's very cool. So are you saying then that when partners saw the other one as humble, compassionate, and positive, is that what you're saying? It was kind of going yeah. both directions? Wow. Exactly. Yeah, we actually had them rate their partners, which is a you know, a real, it's probably more accurate description because it's hard to say, hey, I am very humble, but your partner <laughs> knows how humble you really are. And so we're able to get together, uh, you know, really gather a, a, a better uh, understanding of of humility, compassion. So that's exactly nice. that's exactly it. That foundation is rated by their by their partners. Um, so, Liz, what I've done from this research, I've looked and I've said, you know what, strong, happy, healthy relationships really start with. I call it searching inward. It's about getting our hearts right. It's about humbling ourselves and seeing our partner as a person rather than as an, an object that's really annoying me. It's about being open. It's about being responsive to our spouse's hopes, their needs, their goals, their fears, their challenges. And so when our hearts are right, if that makes sense, yeah. we're able to see our spouse with compassion and respond to their, their needs. So, and that's the first step. I came up with actually um, eight, eight words or four principles really for happy, yeah. healthy relationships. And it starts with, Again, the individual. So I think that we'll tackle that today. These these eight words or these four okay. principles, and that's the first one: searching inward, really being able to take not in a selfish way, but really yeah. an introspective way of what are my gifts, strengths, yeah. talents, those kinds of things. I love that idea, especially character strengths. Right? You're really into that as well, like I am. We're both these fans of positive psychology. How does a person determine or discover what those character strengths are, especially if they're not part of the research that you and your colleagues did? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, there there are some free assessments. There's some paid ones out there as well. Mm -hmm. There's Strengths Finder. Mm -hmm. But the one I love was developed by the father of positive psychology. That's Dr. Martin Seligman himself. So he and his Mm -hmm. colleagues, they've been studying this. It's been around since around the year 2000. And they came up with about 24 signature strengths. And you can take this the survey. It's called the VIA, V is in Victor, VIA Character Strengths mm-hmm. Assessment. And what it does when you take this assessment, it kicks out your top five signature strengths, your core kind of character strengths about who you are and, and what it really takes to, to be a happy, healthy uh, human, right? An individual. Most of us are well aware of our weaknesses. I know I, yep. I sure am. Yep. So being able to uh, assess our, our strengths. That's very cool, isn't it? I love that you reminded me about that. I don't know why they call it via via strengths now on their website, but it is about the research and the personal development. And, and, and you know what I love about positive psychology, Dave, is that it makes you feel good, right? When you get these top five traits, they're pretty mm. positive. Well, try, remind remind yes. us, what, what were your top three when you took this test? Ah, yeah. 
It, you know, it's funny because I, I copied them, I printed them out, and yeah. honestly, Liz, they're right here at the bottom of my screen. So I try to focus on my strengths That's nice. every single day. And the, the top strength, mine happens to be spirituality. Okay. My second one is forgiveness nice. and mercy. And the third is the ability to love and be loved. Oh. So it's, it's a good reminder yeah. of, of who I am, what's part of me, and the happiest Healthiest people on this planet, Liz, are those who know and recognize and then use their their strengths. So I'm curious, Liz. Beautiful. You, you asked me, I gotta ask you, okay. what are your what are your strengths? Well, I like yours better. Can I just say that than the ones that I came up with? <laughs> <laughs> Mine were, like you said, it's so hard to say. How can you say humility? How can you even say that? I'm humble, right? With that with without I don't even feel humble when I say that, but humility was the first one. But you are. Kind, kindness and spirituality. And then, you know, what was kind of fun before we bring on our, our Rex master is I asked my husband to do the test. Now that's pretty cool. That really did show me some strengths of his, his were kindness and humor was number two for him. And it made me think of the early days of marriage where um, Ben loves to tease and uh, poke fun at and, I, I wasn't really into his sarcasm. So I would say things. My classic statement was, honey, it's only funny when both people are laughing. That was my classic statement to everything. <laughs> and this, you know, when he took the yeah, test last yeah. night, it came up with humor. I thought that is so true. Humor is really important to him. And, and, and it's important that I enjoy his humor, right? As is that I can accept it yeah. as is. So I really suggest that couples take this as well. Yeah, that's a great idea because then they can learn a little bit more about each yes. other and then value and draw on, right. on their strength. So we're bringing in Rex. So yeah. Rex is, man, he, he's the man of all things behind the scenes. He helps yeah. produce this. They're our videographer. Yeah. Um, so he's kind of like the man behind the curtain, Rex. Mm -hmm. uh, Rex, <laughs> hop on and tell us a little bit about, you You took this as well. Tell us about your strengths and, and yes. just that process um, of taking The great and powerful Oz has, is here. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> um, so my number That's one true. is creativity, and nice. uh, two is fairness, and three is social intelligence. Ah, oh, interesting, and interesting how even our three strengths they yeah. probably differ, and how even Rex Wright is using his strengths kind of behind the man, the man behind mm -hmm. the scenes, being able to uh, the creativity machine behind all this. So we, I mean, this couldn't happen with without Rex. We're so. So grateful no. for you, Rex, and the, the talents, the gifts, the strengths that you share with us to make make all of this happen. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's not, so, not, a, not a surprise that creativity is is one of yours, Rex. Did that surprise you, any of these? Um, no. I, I thought they fit yeah. me quite well, actually. Um, I, I thought it was I neat to take a test and, and learn about them. Now I'm a little bit like, okay, so now that I know this, what do I do with what do I do that I know? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Do I tap what do you into these, do with that? These superpowers that VIA has now yep. revealed to me. <laughs> yep. They give yourself a boost. Can I can I share something with both of you that was on the via via site? It says this via survey reminds you that you have innate positive qualities that make you special. So when your self esteem is a little low, pull out your character strengths profile. Look at your signature strengths. And remember that you embody these wonderful, wonderful characteristics and repeat the mantra. I bring creativity into the world. I bring fairness. I bring spirituality into the world. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That's a great reminder. Yeah. And, and I think with our partners, spouses yes. as well, being able to have, invite them to take it and then learn them and, and remember them and then use their strengths. Hey, if, if they're curious or um, mm -hmm. creative then draw on their strengths as well. Yeah, Via Via goes into mindfulness and all kinds of things. You can just go to this deep, deep, wonderful hole of information. <laughs> Thanks, Rex, for chiming yeah. in. We're going to borrow you again sometime. Thanks for all you do. Oh, I look forward to it. Yeah, I couldn't do this without you, Rex. I'm here when you need me. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> we'll be right back after this brief message. Welcome back to the Stronger Marriage Connection podcast. So you're going back to your first principle, search inward. It's imperative. You've convinced all of us. So Dr. Dave, after search inward, what's next, please? 
Uh, next, actually, it stems right from those strengths, and that is the words turn outward. So, so much about our behaviors, our actions, the things that we say, the things that we do, it really yeah. stems from our heart, making sure that we're getting our hearts right. Because you can mm-hmm. have you know, fancy communication management skills. These are behaviors. But if inside our hearts are not right, which is the search inward, mm-hmm. then yeah, everything goes out the window. So we search inward and then we turn outward. Now, these are things, Liz, like gratitude. This is okay. kindness and appreciation, mm-hmm. the saying, I love you, the affection, forgiveness, time together, date night, all of these types of outward expressions of really the inward heart of, of who you are. Ah, uh, yep. I love it. So turning outward. It's never about you, is it? It's, it's that, um, like you often say, the, the we before me. Yeah. Once yeah, you clean up right. your side of the street, then it really is about turning to, to your partner. I like yeah. that. And so these much. are more, as I talked about, the, the fruits, yeah. right? When the roots yep. of who we are are in a good place, then the, the, the fruits tend to come more naturally when, when they're sincere. But mm-hmm. here's, I got to put a little caution here, Liz, with this one. Because okay. if you mix up these words that we talked about, if it's search, so it's search inward, but if it's search outward and outward, turn uh-huh. inward, that's the recipe, honestly, for, for disaster. That's a very slippery slope. If I, if I search outward for happiness and for this person to make me happy or social media or this or that, if I'm constantly searching outward, then I'm going to miss the boat. And then what happens is people will tend okay. to turn inward. Yeah, turning inward, then I can't see what my partner or spouse needs. And so it's it's very important that those are right. Search inward, turn outward, not not the other way around. I get that. Makes sense. Makes sense. So how, I think, I'm curious, yeah. though, Liz. Now, uh-huh. in your practice, you know, how, mm-hmm. how have you seen this with couples, with clients, just this whole, you know, having a right. searching inward, a good mindset, turning outward with, with positivity right. and behavior for, for the other? Have you seen that? Well, you bet. You bet. So what I understand is turning outward means turning towards my partner, right, Dave? Yeah, that's right. Every, every husband I work with is given Dr. John Gottman's wise words as a visual aid when they really want to turn to their wife and learn more and be there for her. And those words are, baby, when you're hurting, the whole world stops and I listen. If each that's husband can remember that and turn to his wife knowing that that's his role, that's his responsibility, that's his privilege... Uh, he will set himself up for being there for absolutely turning outward towards her and he'll set himself up for success. Yeah. Those bids for connection. Haven't they been found as uh, the Gottman stuff, at least the, some of the research yeah. that I've done or read his mm-hmm. research and books That's one of the strongest predictors, isn't it? Of, of happiness right. and separation and divorce is learning mm-hmm. to see those Take bids those for bids. connection, yeah. turning toward. Yeah. And, and no one is perfect at it, right? We've got marriage masters, marriage disasters. So I can't remember if it's 80 something percent um, that that's kind of what we aim for, because sometimes we're going to miss those bids. So we've got to do our best to keep our our eyes open and really notice our partner when they walk into a room. You know, notice their facial features, notice their voice. What's different about them? Are they doing OK? And see something, say something right that we're learning from our good suicide awareness that kind of fits in so many facets of relationships. See something, say something. Hey, you look very happy. What's going on? Yeah, Liz, I have to interject this here because I was just yeah. on an uh, airplane uh, mm-hmm. presenting somewhere, coming back, and I was, I was reading another great book. We're going to have um, the authors on here in, in future episodes, uh, How to Improve Your Marriage Without Talking About It. And he actually oh, talks wow. about I love that emotional book. attunement, emotional attunement. And so it starts with being aware, and that's part of like turning outward, being aware in the, in the people's emotions, their body language, their facial expressions. That's part of what Gottman's talk about as well, right? This turning outward and being outward focused on the other person. Who are the authors of that book? Remind me. Uh, yeah, it's Pat Love and uh, yeah. Steve Stosny, I believe. Are okay, those, very uh, good. I remember yeah, Pat we, Love. I just can't remember it was Dr. Steve Stosny. Oh, I'm excited yeah, about that. Yeah, we need to Very that good. So we have got search inward. I think I understand. Clean up our side of the street, right? Yeah, We're not going to be yeah. perfect. But we're going to be 100% accountable and responsible. I love that. Yes. Turning outward is my, my role as a partner. I have made commitments and vows to, for better or for worse, to be there for my partner, right? That's how yeah. I judge a success of marriage is how happy is, is Ben. Um, and now look upward. Look upward, you say. What's that, please? Yeah. 
Yeah. So search inward, turn outward, look upward. This is about, this is about hope. It's about finding meaning. It's about finding this, this purpose that it's more even than us too. For some people, um, looking upward, it, it could be a, a spiritual or a religious looking upward, but it could also be looking upward to family, to friends, to loved ones, to the connections that we have. It could even include a, a good therapist or a counselor, some professional help um, as well. So finding meaning, finding purpose, doing things that bring you together, that, that bring you hope, hope for the future and, and meaning, meaning making about what, what, is, what are we trying to do, these goals together. And so that's what I, when I think about looking upward, it's about um, staying optimistic about the future of the relationship because we're going to have some ups and downs, but that is that, that hope. You have to hold on to that hope in relationships. That's nice. It reminds me of one of our friends to the podcast, um, Dr. Well, it wasn't, I guess, I can't remember if he's a doctor. It's Jeff Fort anyway, who came on and was talking about the vision of how he turned his marriage around just simply by looking at the big picture of how he wanted it to be. He didn't focus on the mistakes of the past of his wife or his own, but he would focus on the vision of how he wanted it to be. And then he acted as if, as if it were that every single day. And he really changed his marriage around. Um, Don't let your eyes off the prize, basically, right? How you lovingly respond, even when your partner doesn't deserve it. Isn't that the key? Isn't that the type of love that we're all striving for? That regardless of what Ben just said or did, can I respond in a way that I'm proud of? Yeah, I love that, that example. Mm-hmm. And that's, that embodies what you're talking about with that, mm-hmm. that looking upward. It is having that. Yes. And I might even throw this caveat in there, um, Liz, about making sure it's a healthy, we're, we're assuming that there, this is a healthy, you know, happy relationship as far as, you know, sticking this, this commitment mm-hmm. and, and being together all in together. And so I just want to th- yeah. throw that in there and be mindful of those relationships where it may not be in the, the best interest. Yes, you bet. Okay, my friends. So we have search inward, <clears throat> turn outward to our partners, look upward in the vision. And the last principle, last two The ones. last one is pressing yeah. forward. Pressing forward. And super important because all couples, right? Even my, me and my wife and, and, and you and Ben have had some ups and downs, some highs and some lows. We're going to make mistakes. We're, we're going to say dumb things, right? I say dumb things yep. all, all the, the time. time. I do. Unkind mm-hmm. words will be said. Yes. So it, it's the sticking together. This is learning um, to forgive. I think learning to forgive quickly is key. Mm-hmm. It's part of this. Instead yes. of holding these grudges where yes. resentment and this kind of this, this meanness, um, it's yes. about sticking together, staying together through the, through the highs and the lows, the challenging uh, time, super important. I might share experience here, Liz, um, be a little bit vulnerable. Um, Shortly after my, my wife and I were married at the right side of her body started getting uh, numb and tingly. And uh, we didn't know what what that was. We went into doctors to try to discover what's happening to my wife, right? Did I marry a lemon or right? What happened to this? It was, it was really a, a tough and trying oh, time. I, yeah, I love my wife. Love, love my I wife. Right? We, we celebrated 24 years. But it yeah. was one of those where it was a struggle, wow. a health challenge. And it she ended up requiring right out of the gate. Brain surgery. Right, out of the right gate. after the gate. Yeah, been married for right? years. Oh, and uh, she required brain surgery. And that that health challenge, it it changed me. It it helped me really understand what pressing forward is, is all about. It's about, wow, being able to, to sacrifice, to stay committed through the challenging times. Now, not everyone is, may have a, a health challenge, but you're going to have some really dark times, some difficult things that are going to have happen in your relationship. And then it's time to really um, turn toward each other and say, hey, is this worth, is, is this worth sticking together through this, staying committed, staying loyal, fiercely Fiercely loyal, I think, is is really critical in in a relationship. So the commitment, uh, and you and I, we love this the same quote. Um, speaking about commitment, and it says this: commitment means staying loyal to what you said you were going to do long after the mood you said in it has left you. And that's by Orbella Benga. Is that right? I hope I didn't yep. I didn't butcher that. Orbella but it's Benga. about really staying. In, when we say yes, or when we say I do, you know, and we're, we're married to each other and we're so in love, I don't think anyone 
gets married to get divorced, that they, they're in there, they're committed, they're loyal. And yes, I'm looking into uh, the other person's eyes. And then that loyalty and that commitment, it's, it's going to be tested. We're going to go through some difficult and challenging the times. Mood, <laughs> the yeah, mood yeah. is going to leave you, in other the words. The mood right? is, is gone, yes. <laughs> I'm not in the mood. Oh, That's my right. goodness. Isn't that something? Yeah, newlyweds quickly learn that, don't they, Dave? They do, yeah. In fact, um, what did I hear? It's about 80%. If we can love and appreciate about mm. 80% of our spouse or partner, I think this stems back to some of Gottman's stuff. And there's going to be about 20%-ish on average, that's going to bug us, that's going to drive us nuts, that's going to be something we <laughs> wish we could change. And But what happens in many relationships is we start focusing on the 20% that drives us crazy, mm-hmm. that bugs us, that we wish we, would change, instead of the 80%. This is why, you know, the reason I, I married this person and that I love about this person is this 80%. But the couples who start focusing on the, on the 20, it starts to feel like yeah. 80% over time. Yeah, are you sure? Are you sure it's just 20 percent day yeah yeah that's right <laughs> i do i, I what, whatever place, we focus, yeah. whatever we, whatever we focus on grows doesn't it oh i focus yes. on the irritations they just get bigger and the numbers then reverse right i'm 80 yeah. percent irritated and 20 percent in love yeah so you're right there's so much about the story we tell ourselves about our partners so many couples will come in and their biggest complaint will be we just don't know how to communicate and uh, I'll let them communicate for a little while, right, to each other. And I say, I think you communicate just fine. You communicate that you're really unhappy with each other, right? You really want the other one to change. So, But I think what we have here instead is a perception problem. It's really how you're perceiving each other and the stories you tell yourself day in and day out about each other that we can really work on. That's where we can make a difference. Yeah, it is. Uh, Liz, I couldn't agree more that... When we're first together, we, we, you know, I happen to have these loving feelings and, yep. and uh, turning outward is not a problem. And then we start running into some, some difficulties. And then you're right. People think, oh, it's communication. It's managing conflict. I say, hey, it's about getting our hearts right first. It's first searching inward and saying, hey, what role am I playing to, in, in, this, in this difficulty? What can I do to, to change? Kind of the change first principle uh, is key, I think, in a couple of relationships. And then the turning outward, let's review them all. Then the turning outward is what can I bring to this marriage table, right? Yes. How can yep, I bring the best of me? Yes. Yep. That, that one is the- really, uh, I would say that those behaviors, and that's what a lot of people focus on is that turning outward, mm-hmm. like gratitude and random acts of kindness. These are the small and simple things, kind of the glue, again, the fruits yeah. uh, mm-hmm. of a good person who is humble, who is, who is you know, patient. Um, yeah. who is uh, positive and has compassion. Yeah. And then the turning out where those actions. Not perfect. Right? Not perfect, of course. Yeah. Right. Not perfect. That's right. I think some yeah, people think feel so discouraged that, oh, with my warts and weaknesses, how can my partner possibly love me? But that's where love gets even better, Dave, I found. You know, that when, when mm-hmm. to, really, to really know someone and to accept them is to love them. If, if I have secrets between yes. my husband and I, and I know that. And he says, Liz, I love you. I'm only going to let that love in so much because in my mind, I'm going to think, yeah, but if you really knew me. So I think when we take the great risk of, of being known, um, that's when true unconditional mm-hmm. love can really enter into our lives. So yeah, looking I upward, you said, it, uh, remind me again about looking upward. Yeah. Yeah, that's about hope. It's about meaning. It's about finding um, direction, and, um, goals, and even looking upward to others. Maybe it's a counselor. Maybe it's time to get some help or some books or some, uh, right, this podcast. Looking for some resources to bring us some, some hope and direction and some meaning in our, in our uh, relationship. And we never stop learning, do we, Dave? You and I, we, don't, we, we grow as we go. We never. never let our foot off the gas. We just really can't. We can't be idle in the most significant relationship of our life. And yeah. then press yeah, forward, my friend. Effort. Please remind us again. Press forward. Press forward. We're going to hit some walls. We're going to hit some bumpy times. Uh, I had a professor once said, hey, what's more important, love or commitment? And everyone, you know, both. And then we, we started kind of arguing in the classroom as these young undergraduates. Love, you know, this is why this is more important. This is, but, and then he said this. He said, 
love tends to kind of go up and down, kind of like the stock market, right? It kind of goes up and down, up and down. There's <laughs> going to be some feelings, days where you know, I, love, I simply yeah. don't like okay. my partner. They're making me mad. Right. Yeah, they're, I'm really irritated. Right. But he said, commitment should never waver. Commitment should always be going, getting stronger and stronger, stronger. And that's what pressing forward is. It's gonna, It's realizing, yeah, there's some irritating times. There's some bonehead things that I'm going to be doing. Quick to forgive and pressing forward, staying committed, and that that fierce that fierce loyalty. So that's what it's about. That's wonderful. And then, do you mind? I'm sorry that I didn't ask you. How is Jamie today? How is her health today? Any any mm. any effects from that brain surgery several years ago? Yeah, you know what? There actually are. She she doesn't have um, mm. bone. They actually removed a piece of her skull um, back here. And so it's yeah. almost like a baby's, um, soft spot in the back of her head. So if she ever gets bumped or a little kid will, you know, reach uh, their arms yeah. around her and ground, it kind of, um, yeah, it it's very tender oh, and it kind of makes her go dizzy, even kind of see black for a minute, but the right side of her body, there was some damage there, some nerve damage. And so it's not as strong as the left side of her body. So yeah, there's some, some little things, some residual, um, effects, but man, she mm. is, She's a sweetheart. I love that yeah. girl. Um, brain I surgery and all. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you did that. You're lucky that you have each other. It hasn't that been something. Nothing is ever wasted, Dave, is it? It always teaches yeah. us how to be yeah. more loving, more um, giving, and more, maybe even more grateful for the lives yeah. that we do have, the partners that we do have. Yeah. And that's Beautiful. really what it did for me. Yeah. Those difficult yeah. times. Ah, glad. Glad that you have each other all these years. And, and yeah. counting. Still going. Still going. Yeah. Soon. Yeah, still going strong. So Liz, as we wrap up this uh, this episode, kind of this first episode, which is just me and you, um, yep. we like to end with the takeaway of the day. And mm-hmm. uh, do you mind me asking you, Liz, mm-hmm. what's your, your takeaway of the day for this one? Um, you know, one of Maslow's theories was that um, what's necessary to change a person is to change his awareness of himself or herself. So I think that's really the key is, is like taking something like the via strengths test, right? Looking at what your strengths are and understanding how you can use those strengths to really develop closer, more loving relationships, being willing to say, I don't like this reflection in the mirror. That's what marriage does, doesn't it? It holds up this mirror so close and I just don't like what I see sometimes, but I have to admit that what I see is true. And little by little, make those changes, even just every day, every day today. What can I do to make Ben's life, my partner's life more worth living? And then doing that very thing. Mm, what about you? What's yeah, your takeaway? I love that. <laughs> uh, I love that, um, Liz. And I, I think my takeaway of the day, there's lots of things going through my through my head. The, the one is probably the fruits and the roots. I hope that the listeners will understand we we want all of it, right? We want the fruits. Those are the great things, the communication and the, the good times. But really those stem from, from the roots. Um, deep down about who we are as a person, developing those character strengths. I, th- I call it getting our hearts right, making sure that we are in a good place personally. And this is physically, you know, mentally. We, we could go on and on about making sure that we're in a good place. I think as well, sometimes we have to quiet our, ourselves. I, I tell students sometimes some of this this teaching that comes from our mind or from our conscious, I tell them to to notice the nudges and follow the feelings. Notice the nudges and follow the feelings. They're going to get you know little impressions, little inkling. Maybe I should send my, my wife a text right now. Or, um, you know, we need a, a date night. Or I should um, do something kind. So follow that. Follow those little nudges and, and those those feelings. And that really helps those those roots to grow, uh, which then the the fruits are ha- healthy, happier relationships. Ah, brilliant! brilliant. So, my friends, um, as we as we wrap up this episode, yeah, we're we're so grateful that you're joining us on this this journey. Uh, thanks so much for tuning into Stronger Marriage Connection. We simply couldn't do this without you. So that's all, and please join us next time. Bye bye. Thanks for joining us today. Do us a favor and take a few minutes, if you haven't already, to subscribe to our podcast and the Utah Marriage Commission YouTube channel. Leave a review and share with a friend. You can also follow and message us on Instagram at Stronger Marriage Life and on Facebook at Stronger Marriage. We'd love to hear from you. Tell us what topics you want us to explore or what you loved about today's episode. And don't forget to check out our website, strongermarriage.org 
for show notes and more great resources from the Utah Marriage Commission for improving your relationship connection. Finally, a big thanks to Utah State University Extension, Rex Polanis, and the Utah Marriage Commission for producing each episode.